So in terms of natural history and indications, the natural history ultimately is not well understood for many entrapments. It's, it's a hard thing to study, but probably the most efforts have been towards carpal tunnel. And some studies look at outcomes in about two years with about a quarter worsening, a quarter stable, and, and about half improving on their own. Um, however, up to a third will develop persistent pain and disability. So it's important to think about what are the indications for surgery. So we always try to work our way up towards surgery, doing um, non-surgical treatments or conservative therapy consisting of medications, activity modification, sometimes splinting in certain entrapments. But basically, if, if that's failed over several months, symptoms are worsening and they're decreasing someone's quality of life, those are indications for a time when to consider surgery. Also for a patient that presents with weakness and or atrophy, this uh, symbolizes a more advanced stage of disease and would also be a surgical indication. So I'd like to take some time on, on the clinical work up here. So we talked about history being so important. Um, really any kind of nerve case, I always wanna know the handedness of the patient, their occupation. I just saw a young patient today who was in the military. Um, he works on, um, as an engineer, basically fixing heavy equipment, spends his whole day kneeling, basically squatting, and, and um, you know, very much predisposed to a common peroneal neuropathy, which we'll discuss a little bit more. So getting their history is, is very important. Of course, wanting to characterize your symptoms, the timing, the onset, um, any trauma to the extremity. You know, these, these are um, very important factors. Um, physical exam. So Dr. Spinner, who I've, I've been to a few different courses, and he's another um, faculty member in this series, he talks about nerves doing three things, pain, motor, and sensory. So really want to focus your, your history and exam around these concepts. Um, finding out about the, the type of pain, the distribution of pain, whether it fits a, a dermatomal distribution or involves more than one nerve. Um, Want to do individual muscle testing and then also sensory testing. There are lots of other um, physical exam maneuvers that are used in working up a patient with a presumed peripheral nerve injury. One is a Tinel sign. So this involves uh, tapping over common sites of entrapment, let's say in carpal tunnel, tapping over the carpal tunnel itself Many times an irritated nerve will, when you tap on it, will send a, a shock-like signal in the distribution of the nerve. So you'd look for a reproduction of the patient's symptoms in carpal tunnel in the first three or four digits. Uh, we had touched on imaging. So ultrasound has really uh, grown in its use in the world of peripheral nerve surgery. It's uh, widespread, relatively cheap, it's non-invasive. Uh, there's an uh, ability to look at images in a dynamic fashion. For instance, you could um, look at the ulnar nerve when ranging the elbow back and forth. Um, and we looked at how in entrapments, you can see proximal dilatation of the nerve upstream to the site of entrapment. Uh, MRI and, and specifically MRN or MR neurography um, is very helpful. It could delineate the pathology in, the, in its relationship to local anatomy. Um, here's just some examples. Um, really, besides carpal tunnel, one could argue that it's, it's worth taking pictures of any entrapment, especially if something is atypical or rare. Um, I, I get an image in every case where I'm concerned about common peroneal neuropathy, and one reason is you don't want to be surprised during surgery. This is an MRI showing a ganglion cyst um, in the region of the nerve, so something that helps to uh, make you prepared and, and have a surgical plan for these cases. So I think one good takeaway is that um, for any atypical entrapment or things besides carpal tunnel or, or one could argue cubital tunnel, it's, it's probably safest to get a, a picture preoperatively. Um, other parts of the workup, so um, EMG, nerve conduction, these tests are supportive. Um, a lot of it is dependent on the operator and the clinical question. So, um, you know, many neurosurgeons um, do spine surgery and now, if you look at a lot of EMGs, many times it will say bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome, bilateral ulnar neuropathy. Um, really, just like spine surgery, it's very important to correlate these data points with clinical findings. So if a patient has no hand pain, let's say, no atrophy, no weakness of the hand, but they're reading these findings, um, really have to take that with a grain of salt and um, make sure that the symptoms align with electrical findings and other findings before you consider any surgery. everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available.
for medical students across the world.